Hello and welcome to the Hellraiser blog. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed today's Hellraiser blog, please hit the subscribe button below and the, uh, the little bell so you get notifications. Uh, we'd love to have you with us on our journey through boxing on the Hellraiser Boxing YouTube channel. Um, as I announced last week, uh, my wife gave birth to our first baby, so we really hit the, work, the ground running. Um, good things coming threes. So we've got like the new baby, uh, Philip Bowes boxing for the Commonwealth title uh, on the 2nd of Feb. That's coming up. We're really excited about that. And the third thing, uh, for Christmas, one of my family members bought me, no, not a toupee, but as you can see, getting the hang of the selfie stick, but a selfie stick. Um, so future blogs will no doubt involve some, uh, some interesting angles from which to... Uh, watch our blog and uh, that's just about right okay so today's blog we're going to cover Philip Bowes boxing for the Commonwealth title and how we got to this point how we made the fight uh, tremendously excited about this for Philip um, I first met Philip well, I first came across Philip before I'd even spoken a word to him I used to manage a boxer called Mark McRae from Tottenham phenomenal puncher uh, Mark McRae wasn't like an elite level boxer he was a solid boxer but he was an elite level puncher um, as several prospects found to their, their peril um, Mark was not the kind of journeyman, he was a journeyman, he wasn't the kind of journeyman that uh, would just go pick up his money and go home, he would could really really punch, really punch a hugely concussive puncher and uh, we got a phone call, do you want to fight Philip Bowes yes we do um, Mark connected with Philip several times uh, even early in the fight, which is the best time to get through with the big shots when you're that concussive a puncher before the guys had a chance to warm up. And uh, Philip Bowes never budged an inch. So I knew Philip had some qualities at least, and Philip won that fight. Um, Philip was matched very hard very early in his career. I mean, if you, you, you look at some of the names that he's got on there, Stanislav Nenkov, a guy who was unbeaten in three, uh, Mark McRae, who I've just said, you know, was a, a, a guy that you would only put a boxer in against Mark McRae he was really sort of a decent because one mistake and it could be good night with Mark um, Dean Mills I remember uh, Dean Mills manager Nigel Christian I used to manage a guy called uh, Floyd Moore and uh, every time we'd put Floyd Moore he was from Portsmouth we, we'd keep putting Floyd Moore he would underwrite the shows because he sold a phenomenal amount of tickets um, and I'd get this phone call from Nigel and Nigel's my dear friend I love Nigel but I'd have to go, Nigel, Nigel, no, right? Floyd Moore will never box Dean Mills. Will never happen. No point ringing, Nigel. You're wasting your time. Will never happen. Right, I managed Floyd for three three years. Very nice guy. Really enjoyed working with Floyd. Um, but at the end of the three years, and he'd just come off a f fantastic win on uh, uh, Sky Sports against a matchroom fighter. So I was on quite high. Then he decides he wants to go and be managed by someone else. The first fight he had was against Dean Mills. From the moment I saw that, I, I knew this is like crazy. That's ridiculous. But I wasn't managing him anymore, so I wasn't going to stick my nose in. You know, let them get on with it. Dean Mills knocked him completely spark out. And um, I, 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 I've got to say, for, for Philip to have boxed all these guys, these aren't the journeymen that you put a kid that can't fight in. So... You, can, you, you can't really say this guy's proven high level, but you can say he's got all the hallmarks of someone, you know, look, I mean, like I say, Francis Maynard, another guy that, you know, everybody would avoid. He was like one of these um, journeymen who fought to win all the time. Um, and it was decent. The fact that Philip went through all those fights and he won basically every round, um, I thought he was pitched in a bit early. He lost two fights um, against Johnny Coyle and Joe Hughes. And... These are guys really that you only fight um, for big, well for me, you only fight them for big, big money. If you're getting a lot of leverage, if everything's right, um, if the money makes sense for it to happen then you go for it. But they're not building fights and I think Philip had those two a little bit early in his career and um, he put it right. He, um, he went away to Norwich and boxed Nathan Dale who he beat. Um, had a little run of wins. He boxed for the English title against Glenn Foote. Um, Glenn Foote 
But the, the three people that have beaten Philip, I think, are all guys that, at the point that he fought them, the, the opponents really were, were underrated. I say Glenn Foote, Joe Hughes went on to win the European title, Johnny Coyle, very good fighter. Um, all the signs were Philip Bowes can go and do something good. The unfortunate thing was that he had two of those fights early, uh, and the one with Glenn Foote, I mean, I think if you'd have had like 10 judges, you might have found like five go one way, five went the other. But it was unfortunate for Philip that the, the, the judges went for um, Glenn Foote. He's rebuilt since then, uh, not least with a great win on, in a Commonwealth title eliminator against a South African called Vasumzi Tiatieka, who he fought on one of my uh, Hellraiser boxing shows that was on uh, Channel 4 um, on KO TV. And Philip, that night to me, showed signs that he had really matured because the way he went about his business, he wasn't taking risks, he wasn't taking unnecessary chances. He was in with a guy who absolutely certainly had come to win and Philip won fairly clearly. So since then he's, he's had a run out um, against a journeyman and now we roll the dice again. Uh, he fights Benson Nila Wheeler from Tanzania. Um, Nila Wheeler uh, is 10 and 1. His only defeat came away from home in Germany on points. Make of that what you will. Um, we're rolling the dice here. This is a very hard fight. But what I've seen of Philip and how he's evolved and how he's developed as a boxer um, over the last sort of couple of years, now is the right time for this fight to happen. Um, Every boxer, you take them as far as you can. And putting him in a Commonwealth title... I could have made a Commonwealth title fight some time ago for Philip. Um, but it's getting it so that the dice is loaded as much as we possibly can in Philip's favour. Um, that's not to say anything untowards going on, but I'm saying he's not going away from home. He, The crowd certainly is going to be um, vastly in his favour. I mean, he's sold loads of tickets. They're, they're selling very quickly. Um lot of tickets gone to the Jamaican community in London. If Philip wins this, he'll be only the second ever Jamaican to win the, the uh, Commonwealth Super Lightweight title. Junior Witter, the uh, former world champion, is the only other one. And just the fact that, you know, being mentioned in the same breath as guys that were world champions who defended the world title successfully, this is going to do Philip Bowe's career the world of good. It will lead to a, a plethora of opportunities if he can pull it off on the night. He is rolling the dice, it is a hard fight, he needs to get it right. If he does not perform 10 out of 10 Philip Bowes, we've got a big problem. So he needs to get it right, he needs to be on the ball, he needs to uh, take his chance when it presents himself to himself. Philip Bowes can punch, um, he hasn't got many stoppages on his record. But if you look at the, and this is exactly why uh, myself, I don't match my fighters in hard fights, I want to know that they can fight and that they can take the pressure and that they can take the heat to a level because I want to know who who to and who not to match them against. But um, when you've had that many hard fights, like I say, look at the names uh, early on. Uh, Paul Appleby, Dean Mills, Francis Maynard, Stanislav Nenkov. These are all guys. Mark McRae. These are all guys that really you want to avoid or if you've got a, a, a for example a ticket seller that can't fight you definitely don't fight any of those guys because you, you'll end up in a world of trouble um your, your guy won't sell you won't be a ticket seller for very long phil bows box them he learned i think he went a little bit gun shy because of that we're trying to bring that out of him and i think on the 2nd of february you'll see philip um seize his opportunity we're all getting behind him. Um, the Jamaican community in London certainly has been getting behind him um, in terms of buying tickets. And it's going to be a big night for, for Philip and for, for the Jamaican community in London. He represents them very proudly. And he, you're going to see... Uh, heart, Philip wears his heart on his sleeve. You're going to see him put absolutely everything into this. And um, I'm looking forward to it. We're all there with him. He's trained by Barry Smith. Barry's in there every day in the, the gym with him. Uh, he does his physio with... Uh, his strength and conditioning with uh, Leon McKenzie. Um, good to be working with him. And um, Philip here gets a win. It opens up a world of opportunity for him. So please keep your fingers crossed for Philip and hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the blog. 
come with us on our journey. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.